Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. I hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on finding a vertex and axis of symmetry for quadratics. First thing we needed to do, of course, to decide if it's going this way or concave down. Since this was a negative one, it's this case. Okay, so it's concave down. All the water is flowing downward. So the carpet's flipped upside down. Second thing we want to do is finding the vertex and axis of symmetry. Really, there's nothing else you can do other than x symmetry is decided by the vertex. And vertex requires you to complete square. Okay. A lot of students don't like to hear the word complete square. So hopefully in this little video, we can get the fair fair removed. It's really pretty simple once we show you what it's all about. So what I want to do first one is since the equation of the coefficient of x term, x squared term is not a 1, I don't like that, so I'm going to pull the minus 2 out. And I'm only going to deal first to terms because I don't want to bother with the 3. I don't want to do extra work if I, don't, if I don't have to. Pulling the minus 2 out for the first term, I have x squared is left. Now, since I use, I need a minus 8 here, since I'm pulling minus 2 out, you can do on the side minus 8 divided by minus 2, that give you a positive 4. So you put a positive 4 in here. Okay, I'm going to close this one and leave 3 here. So from this step, all I did is pulling this minus 2 coefficient off the first two terms. And I left the constant term there. Minus 2 here. Now, here is the completing square term. Here's the magic term where you add a number and subtract it right away. Of course, I want to subtract it because I don't want to change what I started with. And this magic number I'm going to put in there is, oh, here's x, I forgot. You're going to take the coefficient of the linear term or the number in front of the x term and you're going to put it here, divided by 2 and squared. Because for our case, it's 4 over 2, which is 2. 2 squared, I have a 4. Since I added 4, I'm going to subtract 4. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup, kind of like a forming a music band. You're going to have the drummers and the singers and the bass players. Maybe you're going to group them. And you're going to leave this poor lonely guy alone. It sounds sad, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Okay, so I'm going to leave the first three regrouped into a complete square. That's the name, complete square. Okay. Minus 4, I didn't touch it, it's still over here. Now I'm going to multiply this minus 2 to this block and this block here. Okay, so I can write them out. Alright, the work is done here because from this form, by rewriting it, I can literally read what my vertex is. So basically all that step before is I rewrite my minus 2x squared minus 8x plus 3 into a different form. It's not as pretty as the previous form, but this form is very useful because if you notice there's two chunks. There's this chunk and there's this chunk. This chunk, because it's a square term, it's always going to be a non-negative the smallest value this chunk can ever be is 0 because it's a positive term, right? So the smallest of the value it could have, ever have is 0 and this happens is at when x is equal to minus 2. Okay. This is pretty important in that this form allow us to read into this quadratic a lot better than what we actually had before. So kind of like you separate the oil and the water together or separate them apart. This one is all mixed together and this one you separate them apart. Once you separate it apart, you can tell at specific x that we're interested, when x equal to minus 2, this chunk goes to 0. And then whatever is left is our max or min value. 
since our quadratic is fizzing upset down, for our case, we actually have a maximum value. Okay, so, and what is that maximum value then? X is minus 2, Y is going to be 11. Okay, so once again, this whole thing is equal to Y. So we transform this Y from this form to this form through the process of completing square. And once you get into this form, you can read this chunk is always going to be a, uh, actually, this is not the smallest. This is the largest because the mi minus 2 in front of it. This chunk is has a what, what they call extreme value. When x equal to minus 2, this chunk disappears. Whatever is left off is what the function can achieve, max mean value. For our case, it's a max value. And this point happens at x equal to minus 2 and y equal to 11. Okay, so our vertex is minus 2, 11. And when you draw it out, the curve looks like that. Here's x of symmetry. Okay, so vertex is minus 2, 11. And for this line, x of symmetry that goes through this function is when x equal to minus 2. That's the equation of the line. Here's another hex of symmetry. Okay. And on our computer generated solution here, you can see it's a little bit hard to focus, but here is our vertex of minus 2 and 11. Drawing a line through it, since you have x axis right over here, this whole line, the equation for this line is x is equal to minus 2. All right, I hope this one is clear. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun, at least trying to. Please comment or thumb up if this video has been helpful. Until next time, have a confident day.